Because today everybody can publish anything uh, on the web, even uh, uh, even uh, false things, even uh, fake, even I mean uh, everything. We need to teach children uh, how to recognize, how to evaluate internet uh, information. The children today are big consumers of internet resources, but at the same time, uh, they they didn't reach uh, the, 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 the level of cognitive maturity they need in order to critically use information available on the web. So on one side we have. Uh, our children that are called digital natives. They are digital natives only in the sense that they are big users of, uh, uh, intensive users of uh, technologies, but at the same time, they don't always have the capacity to, uh, to critically understand the information they found on the internet. A web quest, a web quest uh, is a technique based uh, on the use of internet resources to solve some problems, cognitive problems, which can take different forms. Um, uh, you can ask children to, to write something or to find a solution of a problem, to analyze a case, uh, to be uh, um, to put in the shoes of a detective, so different type of task. But uh, so it, it's, it's an approach, it's an inquired on a pedagogical level, is an inquired based approach to teaching the learning. So learning by inquiring, this is the idea. Uh, learning by inquiring, inquiring through the internet. So visiting websites, reading, selecting re relevant information after having checked the quality of the website. Here in the hand in the toolkit page uh, at pages 62, 63, you have you have a sheet of the activity. So you can just take a, a photocopy of the two pages and give give to the children. The children can just read the introduction, the task that you have to introduce, of course, uh, and then, uh, 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 and then, uh, uh, of course, you have to mediate the activity and introduce all the tasks and the procedures. Uh, in this specific web quest, uh, the students should be able to identify the responsible of the internet catastrophe. Uh, 
internet, uh, yes, catastrophe, uh, lead to the spreading of the virus in the web. Uh, the list of uh, uh, possible responsible uh, includes five possibilities that I write here on the paper. The first one is Aruba. You're not supposed to know what is a malware. That's why at page 61 there is an explanation of, of the basic lexicon. Okay? So you can find the definition of malware, worms, polymorphic viruses, metamorphic viruses, Trojan horse, harmless and viruses. Even in the way, the big brain, there is a unit focused on viruses. That's why I've chosen this topic for the web quest. In, a, in an attempt to simulate the activity that your children will be doing during the testing, I ask you now to work in group and find the responsible of the catastrophe and write a definition for each term. For example, we have already said that Android is not responsible because Android is dot dot dot. So, uh, when you have, uh, uh, I understood that uh, the specific term doesn't indicate any virus, any virus, please specify what is. So, if Aruba is not a malware, who or what is Aruba? So, please provide a definition. In order to do that, of course, I have to use some internet resources. Uh, I suggest you to explore some websites, for example, on the toolkit. Uh, for the uh, English speaker, speakers, uh, I suggested Wikipedia. In Wikipedia you can find several, several, mm -hmm. so you can suggest your children to visit and use this tool. But of course you can use also other sources, it depends on uh, your, uh, also your country. In Italy we have uh, this uh, magazine, Punto Informatico, which is very reliable in terms of information relating to uh, informatics. Okay, so this is a very easy activity uh, which doesn't require a lot, a lot of time and uh, maybe in uh, maximum 20 minutes you will be able to find a definition for each term. To conclude this activity, please specify the main, the very main criterion you follow it to believe in the information you found on the internet about the viruses. Okay? Just one criterion. Very quick, please. I will call this criterion popularity. Okay? I sign here a number of people saying the same things. Another criterion. The author is one of the things that uh, usually people working on information literacy suggest to consider to evaluate uh, the information reliability. Uh, another ideas. idea. Uh, the diffusion of the news. If the news is shared between a lot of websites, it's probably true. So, popularity. Yeah. Wow. How you decide credibility? This is the, 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 the challenging question. Correct. Correct. Accuracy. Known websites. So, popularity. Well, uh, one, two, three, four, five. This 
is uh, definitely the most common criteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably you know that Google works on this principle. Huh? I mean, when Google rank results in the page of results, uh, the criterion followed by this search engine is popularity. The more the website is quoted, is visited, etc., the more uh, uh, is uh, on the top on the list of the list. But, but, uh, but this is not always true so because there are several uh, wrong news. Uh, news that are completely not true, uh, etc., which in a, in a very short time, through a system like tum, 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 like a virus, spread into the web. So popularity uh, is a reasonable parameter. I mean, uh, on a I would say um, it's, it's uh, undestinable that the people uh, believe in things that are very, 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 very common and frequently quoted by other people. But at the same time, popularity uh, is an uncertain criterion to evaluate the, the real quality of the, of the news.